Francis Tigo. You guys know where you are. You're at Expert Talk. And today, as always, I bring unique people. And I've got Lauren Michaels Harris today. He's bringing energy. He's bringing fire. He's fun. This little bell, when he hears something that he loves, he's going to hit it. Lauren, what's happening? Welcome to the show. Oh, what's man. Everything's happening because I'm here. I can't tell you how excited I am to be here with you, Tigo. I can't tell you how excited to have you here. I mean, when you first, when I first met you, I looked up and said, I see all this stuff behind you. We got to talk about everything. And you said, oh, yeah. it's not about what's on the wall. It's about what's missing from the wall. What's coming up. Oh my goodness. Now, first of all, we got to talk about the fact that you're not new to television. You host your own show, correct? I do. I do. I'm in my fifth year which is, uh, uh, I call a season from January till uh, the week before Christmas every year. And I uh, only take the weekends off Monday through Friday. And I have a show called Bathrobe Moments. Bathrobe Moments. Okay. Yeah, not bathroom <laughs> moments. <laughs> I've had that one. No, Bathrobe Moments. And it's because I just wanted to create a safe space, um, a welcoming space that was unpretentious. Um, and I'm lazy, so I didn't want to have to get up and put on clothes to do it. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and this yeah, was and pre COVID, my four year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> and at least he's wearing a robe. Now, I had the privilege, a good friend of ours, you know, Jennifer, shared videos yeah. with me. You're a talented man. We're going to get in talking about your, your singing, your talent, and your video. Um, We're going to talk about that. We're gonna, I want to talk a little bit about your history because you and I share. A lot, apparently. We're both, you know, went through the system a little bit. And let's talk about that. Let's talk a little about, you know, going through the foster system because you did that. You survived as a young man. For that a little bit? Sure. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That's a diving board I've climbed and jumped off many times. But it took me 40 years to uh, make it to the top of that 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 uh, ladder, to dive off that diving board, um, to tell that story. But thank God I did. And I almost ran off the stage that night three times. Um, and the girl sitting next to me was, uh, there were like 10 speakers. It was something, we all auditioned and it was a thing called Listen to Your Mother. And they wanted stories of people's experiences with motherhood. And that was the first year they thought, oh, what about some guys? So they were really open to it. and. So there were three of us nationwide, three guys, and I was one of them. And I told my story of having had 22 mothers through the foster care system, including my original, my Eve, my birth mother. So, you know, um, and it was the first time I ever truly told that story. And I, uh, like I said, I almost ran off the stage three times, but that story, I, it was the very first, I opened a YouTube channel when they sent me the video like three months after the, after the event. And I was like, well, someone said, you should put it on YouTube. So I did. It was the only thing I had on my YouTube channel. I had three subscribers. And Goldcast wow. found that video and produced it. And it has millions and millions and millions and millions, almost with Jay Sheedy's help, uh, 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 about 20 million views worldwide when you add them all up. And I just never would have imagined that. For so many decades, the things that I, I hid, I pulled my sleeves down, I buttoned everything up because I felt I had all these un, un um, I can't even, you know, some words they haven't even invented yet, but these scar, right. let's just say scar, they were that, see, they were that big in my world that even to say a scar really in my world, uh, post or pre rather is, is it, it just doesn't stack up, but for the sake of time, that's what it was, scars. But that night, after that night, and when I saw what Goldcast did with it, and I see the engagement with people, not the views. It's not about the whatever amount of views. It's the engagement, the likes, the shares, the comments. And everything that I thought I would never want to ever mention or revisit or share because I was embarrassed, I was shamed, uh, you know, 22 moms, how do you explain that? Those scars that night turned from something to be ashamed of to something that when I truly looked at them, I realized that all along when I, what I was searching for was healing and I had proof of healing. Every time I would have 
found the courage to look at a scar, but for decades I didn't. I hid behind drugs for 14 years um, to avoid looking at those scars, only creating more. But then you get to a point in life where it will always come together. If you seek, you will find it. And when it all comes together, it all begins to make sense. You notice that I'm not looking through the same eyes anymore. I've been to some like universal LASIK surgery clinic and it's been removed. And now I see that not only is, uh, is a scar the first proof I have of healing that is with me every place I go because I am where I am. But also that when I truly look through what I now call the third eye of authenticity, to thine own self be true, as Shakespeare told us, I find that underneath every scar, there is indeed a heart. If you look closely mm -hmm. enough, it's a heart that's been waiting there all along. But it's been waiting for each of us to give that 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 heart permission to beat. That is the lifeline of our stories. And so uh, I'm just grateful that it is available for all of us. That's the exciting part. When you get it, you can't help but want to give it away because it's like, who knew? Right. You know, yeah. So let me ask you, I mean, you know, right now, especially during COVID, and as I sit here and I listen to your story and I watched your video, the first thing I thought about, the foster system has always been tough, you know, and in the middle of COVID right now, I mean, people could be watching this in 2025, 28. We don't know when they're watching it, but right. as we're watching, as we're speaking about it, it's 2021 and we're in the center of this COVID thing, you know, what right would you middle. tell somebody that is going through it right now? Because young people, they're, they're, this is what they do. They go and watch video. You know, their their heads are down, their thumbs are going, they got the strongest thumbs in the world. You know, what would you tell somebody that's in the middle of being in the foster program that feel like maybe they're never gonna make it out of it, that there's no hope for them, you know? What would you tell them? I would tell them that you have to try to understand that there are no such things as mistakes. That everything right now in your world that feels dark that feels cold, that empty. When you feel like you are invisible and a day feels like a year, you aren't just in there with whatever it is, whatever type of trauma, abuse, fear, all of the above. You're also in there with an entry point, a future blessing. What will happen is this will take you to a destination that is paved with a road where passion is on one side, your purpose will be on the other side and you will find yourself hopefully standing directly in the middle, the yellow line, if you will, because that is the yellow line of patience. It divides and makes everything where you can ascertain the true meaning of it without it all being clumped up together. You have to wait on it. You have to be patient. So there really is no thing as a mistake. Those are merely blessings that have just been born into the process of becoming. And so I want to encourage you because for, let's just talk about the trash bags that we've all been handed if you're in the system or you know someone has, who has been, and it's still prevalent today. How can that be 40 some years since I was in the system? Why should any child be mm -hmm. ever attached to anything that speaks to garbage? So that's a grooming technique, but you're not in there alone. What I am so grateful for was my experience in the foster system put me into direct contact with what is greater than I and the internal GPS system that I live by today. All along, it didn't matter how old I was. First of all, I, I, I didn't, I always knew that I should not be trying to beat the odds. Like they tell you, you know what the odds of a kid coming out of the system? You know what the odds of a black kid who leaves the system without going to? And I figured if those things have to happen, if that's what the odds are, it's because it's helping me create odds through them. Right. Because I already beat the greatest odds known to man when I was conceived and, and made it here. One in 400,000 quadrillion. That's the biggest number, the biggest odds, the greatest odds. And, I, and we all beat that when we were born without oh, ever forming a thought or uttering a word yet, not even having taken a breath. Really. Mm -hmm. And so if that's, if we did that from the gate, wouldn't it make sense that we're here now not to beat odds, but to create them for others who wanna find what we already have. And so I just wanna say, uh, you know, the foster care system is, is broken as are many things in our world. 
But the one thing that you can count on never being broken is you. They'll try to tell you you are, but you're not. You're merely bruised. And bruises heal. You're not a toy. You're not a bumper. You're not a windshield. You're a soul with a purpose. Bruised, but never broken. You know, after the break, and, and I'm, we're going to go to break in a little bit, but before we go to break, because you are a talented man and you are quite funny. You had me cracking up before we started, you know, and I know that, you know, we're going to talk about your show. We're going to talk about your album, all of that good stuff. Okay. But you're also an author, you know, yeah. you're a writer and yeah. I know people are, they're stuck at home, you know, and they're thinking, I, I, I've always wanted, they, they may have the, the next, you know, Pulitzer Prize winning book in them. They may be a poet. They yeah. may, how do you start? How do you, you get that first word down, that first paragraph, that first chapter? How do you mm -hmm. get started to start. be an author? You start. You're an, you're an author and you're learning your ABCs because you, you write a word when you learn. You're an author every time you cry and you shed a tear because when it lands, wherever it lands, whether you realize it or not, somewhere in this universe, that tear has created a syllable to a word that is within a sentence, within a paragraph, on a page, within a chapter, within a book, within the volumes known as your life. So we've been writing, we've been creating uh, from the beginning. I don't believe in writer's block because I know that everything that comes to me is coming to me on its way through me. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to come up with anything. I just have to live my best life. And that means doing the best I can with what I have to work with. And the great thing about it all is we all have access to what it takes to do that from the very beginning. Uh, I, I refer to them as the I in words because they are, all, they are all encased and protected within us. They're not where anyone can get to unless you invite them. That is integrity, instinct, intuitiveness, insight, intellect, intelligence, all of those things that build character, build relationships, build, build, and build again. Building is, ex is, is expanding, it's evolving. It's not destroying or, or tearing down. So, you know, everything, everything is meant to, to add unto. And it's just, it's, you know, he go, it just, again, there are just words, some words have not been invented yet. And when you find yourself in a spot where you keep saying like that, that's a sign that's confirmation to me. It's like this guy opening up and what is great and I'm saying, hi, how you doing, Lauren? Uh, you know, it's what I call the snow globe effect. When you're going through something, whatever it is, a test, in order for you to be going through a test, it's because you're testable. Right, right. And, and, and that's to get your testimony. We've all heard yeah. that. But yeah. the snow globe, you know, is to break us of shiny optic syndrome. Every snow globe, I keep one somewhere on this busy desk. Here it is. I keep this here. I like to, I can show you better than I can tell you. You know, when things are going on, what is greater than us is merely shaking up the snow globe. But you see all that stuff. Ooh, look at what would a snow globe be without that stuff floating around in there? But we all stand there, but there's always a backdrop, a story or a picture or something at the back. And we stand in our lives when he shakes up in he, she, they, them, those, whatever, whomever it is, they are, that is greater than us. They shake it up. It gets, we get, our world gets shook up. And people think it's just like, I can't see that thing on the wall. I can't see what's right in front of me. Well, maybe it's not about what's right in front of you. The beauty of a snow globe is you can see from through the top, too. And I believe in my world anyway, that the creator shakes my snow globe, hoping that I will get the, the promise about laws, rip effects, ripple effect, domino effect, law of gravity, law of principles. Prin principles are laws. We can't break them, but we can be broken against them. But with this thing, what it's all about is it took me decades of staring at the backdrop, watching all the shiny objects go by, thinking, is it still going to be there? When I decided to finally start looking up and watch the beauty of it as it settled down, because gravity dictates that all of these distractions, they're going to settle from the top down. 
And lo and behold, one moment, it only took one nanosecond of a moment where I was looking up and I locked eyes with what is greater than me, looking down through the top of the snow globe. And it didn't matter what was swirling around me. Suddenly, I felt the presence of the hand that was holding me. So I wasn't all messed up in my feelings about when that same hand shook it because I knew he had me. I, I can there. shake this and shake this and shake this. But as long as I keep it in my hand, you know, it's that kind of a thing, Tico. It's that kind of a thing. We don't, it doesn't have to be difficult. Now, I can't think of a better way for us to go to break because y'all know I like bringing people that are blazing a trail. And this man is blazing one bright trail that you can see. Well, I can see it from here and he's in the Midwest. So uh -huh. sit right there because he's going to come back and tell us exactly how to get over your fear if you want to be in front of the camera, oh, yeah. if you want to sit in our seat and know how to host your own show. So don't go nowhere. Sit right there. We'll be right back. Hey, it's Tigo, and I'm sitting down with Mr. Lauren Michaels Harris, and we're talking about, well, a little bit of everything. But right, right now, we're going to talk about fear because you guys ask me about mm. how do you get over your fear? You guys were born to do TV. You were born to be out on stage. I got news for you. Even Oprah wasn't born to be out on oh, stage. What? You got to get out there and do it. And that's how you get over it, in my opinion. Well, let's find out what Mr. Michael Harris, Michael Harris says. How did you mm. do How do you get out in front? That's interesting because I posted something on my page today that said that, you know, just make sure when, if people don't receive your message, don't move them to the back of the line. They'll move themselves. And That's deep. it's kind of, you know, it's, well. uh, you know, <laughs> okay. they'll move themselves. Well, because just like when it was a, a matter of getting somewhere, I, you know, I'm, here's how I do it. Here's how I do it. I can only speak from the place of authority that I said or stand from. And it is this. I learned that you know, I'm a master of story. I love story. I, I see words and things three dimensionally. And so that's the gift because I knew all along that my message did not come from me. It came through me. Everything back here, as we were talking about earlier, Tiga, all the things, all the things you see, that's there to remind me of what still needs to be created to hang on a wall that doesn't have something on it right now in my world. But everything there started in a place like that. My wall of purpose. Everything. I write everything on a poster. Everything. Uh, that matters, whether it makes sense, it's in context, out of context, uh, a name, a date, whatever, because I show that I believe everything has a reason, number one. And then I show what is greater than me, that I keep what is important to me right in front of me. And when I need it, it's there. It is there. So that's how I learned. I, I conditioned myself to understand the, the, the formula, the beauty, the magic of content coming to us on its way through us, right? So I don't have to worry about coming up with anything. My best content always comes from the life I've just recently lived or am currently living. And, Fantastic. you know, but the great thing about story for people to be able to tell and do this thing, here it is, here it is, dog in a good, here it comes, here it comes, platinum nougat. Once you see scars for what they are, and you see the life that lives without, underneath, lives underneath, I believe that what created us pounce on us when we get that knowledge to find and summon the courage to look over our shoulder to where we've been in life, to go back to the proverbial scenes of those crimes, because trauma was never the only thing there for us. It was the only thing we took with us, because fear is either you face everything and rise, like I'm doing now, because I see it for what it is. But at the time, all I knew was flee everything and run. Oh. You know, so I flee. I was like, I'm out of here, you know? And then life says, okay, that's okay. Because there are no mistakes. Your blessings are with you that you need for what's next. And then I get to the point in my life where I start going back, like the night I told my story, which now has over 20 million views, was because I went back to that day. I went, I, I remembered myself people think that remembering means like oh yeah i remember you were in that green car this and it. yeah that is one thing but you can also remember yourself to moments in time fond memories um not so fond memories but when you go back when you're prepared to go back which you don't want to go back until you do 
or are prepared, when you get there, you find that there were all these parting gifts that you didn't take because you were fleeing. As I'm, I'm gone, you know. But you go back and, and the creators, that force, that source counts on us coming back to the scene. Yeah. All of those blessings that were there all along. The thing about how we know that works in every way is because it's true. Look where it falls in most things. I promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me. Right. Um, I am the truth, the light, and the way. Truth is always first. And right. that's because truth is the only thing in the universe that will never change. The truth right now, like you were saying at the top of the show, 20, 30, 40, 80, 100 million years from now, the truth is not going to be the truth. It's when people try to change it. It doesn't. They didn't change the truth. They just came up with a new version. A version is a take on the truth. It's a white watered down. You know. So the truth is the only thing that won't change on us. But the great thing is, is it won't change. It won't change on you. So when something, everything changes in your world and things stop or they drag or the wheels stop moving, it's not because the truth left you or me. It's because we left it. Oh. And through remembering, you can always go back. I love that. And that goes for creationists and it goes for atheists. In the beginning, or well, once upon a time, take your pick. That, now that brings me to something I read in your bio. And I want just a little bit of clarity from you. <laughs> the ripple effect. Oh, yeah. What does that mean? What does those two words mean to you? Because it seems very important from what I saw. It is. Clear that up for me. It but is. Hold sure. On. The ripple effect was a surfboard handed me when I got on the waves of purpose. And the ripple okay. effect was what I tell people. That it was my, my bread and butter speech because okay. it was the one that I could get. I could get paid 400 times in two years, 400 times. And it worked for kindergartners all the way through CEOs at Whirlpool. I did it for all of them. And the thing about the ripple effect story is that it, it, it's all about intention. A lot of people think that when they start a rumor or something, they do it for that one person they're aiming at. But it's like a tsunami. It'll hit the shores and splash all over. And everything we do, every thought we have, uh, there are only two sponsoring thoughts. as the four agreements of a great book uh, says. Only two sponsoring thoughts, one of fear or one of love. So it's like a seed. If you begin with a seed of fear, you're going to grow a plant of fear. It's going to bear fruit of fear. Mm -hmm. At the same token, the opposite. From love, it'll be love. It'll, it'll grow love. It'll bear love. And, you know, when you throw something up, everything you do, every word, every, every it's okay. It's, the thought is one thing, but the minute it becomes an utterance, it is now outside of you. You have thrown a metaphysical, a spiritual, however you need to see it, you've thrown a pebble above the world you live in. And oftentimes people don't, that's why if you ask people, uh, you know, last year, this time, and for the last year, what was the, the greatest hindrance in your journey that stopped you from this or prevented you from that or talked you into uh, the assassin word, the serial killer, T-O-O, -O, too hard, too heavy, too expensive, too old, too tired. It is because, do I really have to say it? Do I really have to say it? What do you think all of that is for? All yeah. these things fall under the thing, uh, the category of words and phrases that are designed to deceive us. Ooh, I'm on the ladder of success. Google it. Say, show me a picture of the ladder of success. You know what you're going to see? Some woman in a, in a nice... Um, a uh, Fortune 500 corporate looking suit with pearls on, her hair in a bun most times, and they're always at the top of the rung and going like this. Well, how come you ain't reaching up to get on something? If something it's just set up, put your best foot forward. How? There's a ladder rung in front of me. Well, turn around then and put your best foot forward. Anybody who's ever had a thought in their head about suicide, like I have many times in my life. Mm. That was when I was told to turn around on the ladder of success because you ain't supposed to be. But the thing about it is that ladder is what we're supposed to have. But all we have to do is be smart enough and say, why is this pitting us against each other above and below when we should be beside each other? 
maybe if I get down, I'm going down. Excuse me, move out the way. Because up here, I'm in the water. I'm constantly getting crapped on in my career. Well, if you're on that ladder of success, somebody's above you, what you looking at? What you staring up into? They're behind. What comes out of there? You're wondering why you're getting crapped on. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense to me. Who is getting yeah. hot in here? That's the breath of the person that wants what you have. So the thing about it is get out, get down, put your feet on solid ground. But one of the promises, my my faith is built on solid ground. Turn that ladder instead of it being vertical. Turn it horizontally. Use it like a number line. Stand in the middle. Use it as a scale. To the right is positive. To the left is something that is going to turn into positive but doesn't feel like it at the moment because there are no mistakes. But at least you get to see what's pulling on either side and your feet on the ground. Every time, everything you go through now, to the left and to the right, every time you move forward, all of it, count it all joy. It all moves with you because it was all meant for you. And so you start Xing out these lies and these, these, these whispers of deceit that are designed to make us stop ourselves. Everybody always says, my biggest obstacle last year was me. Mm -hmm. Was me. So go every place you have been where you were me. I told the story of the, the boy who wasn't even Lauren. I didn't even know my name was Lauren until they came to take me out of the house I'd been in until I was 11 years old. Mm -hmm. And they said, your name is Larry. No, they said, your name is not, your name is is not Larry. I was Larry Dixon. They said, your name is Lauren Harris. You never were adopted. Wow. You were just a deal between two African American women in 1962. Trash bag back with you. And we need to leave in 20 minutes. And everybody in my family that I'd seen since I was seven days old, nobody could look at me. And that's okay. But the part that wasn't okay was because for so many decades, even I couldn't look at me. I figured there must have been a reason they couldn't look at me. And I hadn't realized until after I told that story and I needed to move into social media circles. But I had Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and not one of them had a picture. They all had the silhouette. I realized then that for 30 some years, I had shaved my head, brushed my teeth and shaved my face in the shower. Never once looking at myself in the mirror. Wow. And... I found the mirror that showed me me, the true me, when I went back to the very beginning. And I picked up the mirror that was intended for me to look through. I rode in with one vehicle. I'm going to ride out in the same vehicle. And there are all kinds of accessories and add-ons that came with this vehicle. And I left them back on the showroom floor. I abandoned the vehicle for decades through through drugs. I know now, I said, because of those I-N words, Lauren, you don't have to stand up in front of the world and say, I am still a drug addict because that's what they do in meetings. I never was a, addicted to drugs. I was addicted to the invitation I gave drugs. Because they couldn't have done anything in me if I hadn't invited it inside. Just like people that have had bad experiences or bad relationships or been burned, how did they, how did they get there? invited. I abused the invitation. You know why? Because I hadn't learned yet. But that's okay. Again, no mistakes. The moment I started looking at every opportunity and saying, is this an opportunity or not first? Because opportunities only come in doors and windows. Door of opportunity, window of opportunity. All those years I was listening to wall talk from people that I thought were had my best interest. Oh, just get over it. You don't need to find those people. You'll find a way around this, even if you can't go to college because, you know, you don't have any money in the foster care system doesn't provide anything. For you. Oh, man, you, 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 you in debt that much. You, I don't know how you're going to dig your way out of that. one. That's what you do to walls. You dig under them, you skirt around them or you climb over. them. And I've never heard of a wall of opportunity. When I started looking through that third eye of authenticity, they turned, every one of them turned into a door or window because God knows if I can see through it, I just might summon the courage to go through it. It's not about a light at the end of a tunnel. It, think about that. How can there be a light at the end of the tunnel? I'm the one digging the tunnel. So it ain't no light. I got to dig to the light. So what do, what do people that go into tunnels, miners and stuff, do they take the light with them? They are the light. Every place they turn, they are one with the light. I decided I, I couldn't make it through a tunnel, trying to dig a tunnel like I was Helen Keller. 
I had to find my light. And guess where it was? Right back there with all those other party gifts, those blessings that were waiting right where I left them. When I fled because I thought I was on the run from something that didn't even exist. You can't catch something that doesn't exist. You can't get caught by something that doesn't exist. So what do you do? You go round and round and round. God broke me of that one day. When I had a recurring nightmare all my life, for 40 years, that I was always, my rock bottom was a dream where I would end up in a, an underground parking structure. And I'd be walking. And I'd always hear a second clickety-clack, clickety-clack right behind my feet. And I just kept ending up there in sanity, doing the same things, expecting a different stuff. I kept ending up there. The car that I was going for was looked like three miles down with one little light bulb dangling above it. But every time I did whatever I did to run from something towards it, it got farther away. And one day the boy said to me, Lauren, what do you, why are you running, always putting all your energy into things you don't know? Why are you afraid of the question mark? Don't you know that if the question mark isn't in something, it means I'm not in it. Look for the question mark. It means I am there. I will answer all questions that are before you. I will answer the questions beside you. And I will answer the questions even behind you. He said, why don't you focus on what you do know? You know it's you in here. You know you're one set of the footballs you say you've been hearing. Why don't this time you just take your shoes off? At least you'll know where the other sound is coming from. You'll have more intel than you had a moment ago. And long ago, I said, okay, I did it. I took them off. I started walking, nothing. I must got walk faster. Nothing. Maybe I need to just casually jog. Nothing. I'm gonna run. Nothing. Now all of a sudden I'm running, but the wind feels different. Everything is brighter. The car down there is coming closer. And it was all because it was the difference between running towards something as opposed to running from something. Wow. Different race all together. It's like trying to run this direction with your feet pointed that way. Try that. You, sir, are amazing. You are absolutely amazing. Um, the truth is amazing. I, I have got to have you come back on again uh -huh. and again and Ooh. again. You touched on this much. I mean, we barely scraped the surface. Please, please tell them how we can see your show, how we can get in touch, you know, what can we do? How can we find you? Well, if you just want to kick it, uh, laurenmichaelsharris.com, that's where you'll find everything about my nonprofit, The Power of Re Symposium, um, my speaking, uh, also uh, bathroom moments on there, my show, you can find links to it there. Everything I am is there, or you can just Google me and, um, and take a good look at the body of work. And that means the work of the people that have been blessed to be sitting in the front row seats of my life that provide opportunity after opportunity. You'll be able to have access to stories and you can watch in real time what is greater than me, what it has done for me in just a few short years. Because it's not about, I don't want you to stargaze when you see anything, anything, Oprah, me, Tigo, even yourself. But I want you to see even with these things and, and, and Tico and the show and us that do these things is that we are you and you are we, we are the same. And, you know, if we can do it, you can do it. Your story is your story, never ending. You were brought here to tell it, so share it. Um, uh, when you are given access to one person, when one person in the grocery store line is riveted, when you're telling your story, the person says, you should this, you should write a book, you should that, that's validation. Let me tell you something. If you're granted access into one mind, one heart, you're granted into that soul. And God does not say this person is worthy of your message more than or, le or less than another. So if you, if you have one person that you, your story resonates with, you have potential access to every heart, every soul on the planet. We all do, and we need to tell our stories. We are proof of a modern day stone soup story. Bring your one carrot, bring your onion, your single potato, whatever it is, if we pour it in together and we have the conversations like we're doing right here, this world can feast and not be part of the planet. You're amazing, sir. You know, I, I want to thank you, like I said, and we definitely mm -hmm. got to have you back. We have I'd definitely got to have you back. Yes. 
you know, usually I would do a long close, but there is no long close for this show because this man, this man has really got my mind going and I hope he's got your mind going. Get that creative thought going. Don't stop yourself. Get going and build and create and allow yourself to think. I'm Tigo and I'll talk to you next time.